Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about generics and C++ and templates. Now, if you hang around the C++ community or see some talks or are maybe just reading through a text or an online argument, you'll see this funny acronym show up that's called CTAD. And CTAD stands for Class Template Argument Deduction. So let's go ahead and put some text here just to put this in front of you. And class template argument deduction is sort of what it sounds like. And we've actually seen this previously in this series when we looked at abbreviated function templates. And that was the ability to figure out what the arguments are of a template without actually having to type them in. So I just want to go ahead and do some examples. So whenever you see CTAD, you'll be able to not be scared by this funny sounding acronym, but understand that it's just a helpful feature introduced in C17 to help us write some cleaner code. All right, let's go ahead and see this in use. So let's go ahead and say I have some templated uh, class here uh, or struct, uh, just some data type that I've created here called entry. And it takes in a uh, first and a second uh, type here. So this is essentially something you might use for a key value pair. OK, so two different types in our template parameter list that I am initializing this uh, struct to, and I have first and second here. OK, so that's the idea. So if we wanted to create something that had a key or the first entry as an integer and the value as an integer as well, it would look something like this. So let's just go ahead and compile this and show you that it works. Now, the cool thing with class template argument deduction, so class template argument deduction, CTAD, is that we don't actually have to provide these parameters here. If we have some way or the compiler has some way that it can figure out what the types are, we just don't have to specify it. So watch this. Let's go ahead and modify our entry here. And I'm just going to erase the types here and recompile and rerun here. And amazingly, if I run this, so entry dot uh, key here, let's go ahead and do one line and then another one for our value. And again, rerun, recompile, we'll see that the correct values are being printed out. There's no errors. It's not giving us 5.0. It's giving us the exact types here. And again, we can play around with this. Let's go ahead and try uh, 100. Um, a floating point value here. Now, C out's not going to uh, specify that here. So let's just go ahead and do some sort of decimal type here so that we can again see that the correct type is being stored. It's not being cast down to an integer. The compiler is not guessing. It actually knows. And that's exactly, again, what class template argument deduction does for us. And this works with other types for us as well. So for example, let's include vector and Let's go ahead and say I want to create a vector of uh, integers here. So normally I would type this out and have a vector here. And I could use something like a list initializer here. And again, this is how we'd create a vector. But if I can deduce that the type is uh, all integers here, I can actually just get rid of int here and create this vector same as before. Now let's go ahead and see if this works if I do something sort of ambiguous here, like 3.0f here. OK, now this does cause a little bit of a problem here because the compiler needs me to make a decision here, basically deciding, hey, uh, what's the actual type here? So it's getting a little bit confused. It's, you know, not sure, um, you know, all these types aren't the same. Let's see if we can help it out by just making everything the same floating point type here so that the compiler can again deduce the type. And in this case, it can. It sees that everything is uh, similar here for the template parameter. So we do have to be a little bit careful with this uh, tool here, but it can help us write code. Personally, I do like specifying the template uh, parameters, but again, you don't have to, uh, and this is just how it works. Okay, and just to again show that this works, you know what's coming here. We got to pass this through CPP insights. So let's go ahead and just take our uh, code here and paste it into CPP insights just again so that I can show you that it's working um, for us. Our compiler is actually doing the work. OK, so let's paste this in here. I'm actually going to get rid of the vector version because that brings in a lot of um, uh, extra files here. So let's just get rid of that. And let's go ahead and we should see a 
instantiation of a template with a int and a float parameter here. And clearly we can see that we have this instantiation here, this template here for our entry here. And we can see our constructor here has been appropriately translated with the types here for int and float. And you can see we even have the uh, trailing return type here for our function, uh, which is also a new C++ feature. So folks, I hope that was a helpful lesson for you. I hope it made this acronym or some of these acronyms that you hear in C++ like CTAD less scary. It's just a useful feature that's going to help us. And as long as you're using C++ 17 or beyond, this can be something that can clean up your code. Personally, I like putting in the actual template parameter list, but again, that's probably because I'm an old school C++ programmer these days. Uh, but again, it's a helpful feature that you can consider using with your team. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed this lesson. Make sure you like and subscribe as always, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.